Uh, I'm very happy to uh, host uh, this discussion with Philip. And so uh, we, so there was a big announcement in the past few days. So I think it will be interesting to talk about that. So last week, Samsung launched its digital health initiative in the form of an open and modular uh, hardware platform with its big data cloud component. And then on Monday, Apple launched iOS 8 with HealthKit, which allows users to share their data across different health applications. So, Philippe, what are the benefits of an open hardware platform? And do you think it will increase the innovation in the industry? Well, you know, the, the challenge is open for whom? Is it open for developers? Is it open for users? Is it users who want to own their data? And uh, especially if it's health data, is that what users want? So, so I think when we talk about open platforms and benefits, it's benefits for whom? Is it benefits from the company who, 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 who builds the ecosystem, owns all that information, uses that information to home their technology? So I, I think there are different points of view depending on who you look at. If you're talking about Mrs. and Mr. Everyone, what is their benefit in in having a platform, say, owned by Apple or Google or or the NSA, and uh, if you know, what's the benefit that your insurance company has in owning all your health information? What's the benefit that Apple has? What's the benefit that a device maker has? So I think there there are different points of view, and we're technologists. We build technology. Uh, we work with pretty much all the constituents in there, and so we're, we're happy to do this. And it's very exciting to see how the business is growing. But I think that when you look at questions like that, it really depends who you talk to and who you're talking about, whether it's developers or end users or insurance companies, et cetera. So, well, basically, if so, Samsung didn't share a lot about how open is it and how if it's an open source uh, project or not. but. We can imagine it means maybe that if it's an open source project, if Samsung uh, decide to stop it, maybe someone could take over, not just a manufacturer. What do you think about that? Well, I'm not sure what you mean by open. Does open mean that anybody has access to my information, or does open mean that uh, there are some APIs that, as a as a device maker, I can use, make a device that runs in that? And then my information becomes the information that my devices produce for the user become part of that. I mean, it, 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 again, you know, it's it's. I think, for example, the Apple announcement or the Samsung announcement were made in for developers. Those are, you know, if you're a developer yes, and you yes. want to build a a a, uh, a device, you can actually use Apple's ecosystem and do that if you want to do that. Uh, Google will has something similar with Android Wear, and you're going to have kind of a dual dual poly of those. Um, you know, you, you have some choice, but it, it, you know, this is not a sports event where there's one winner. You know, sports events have one winner. You know, one 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 team wins a Stanley Cup. Uh, there are going to be multiple winners. There's going to be players, and we see that, you know, as, you know, we're an IP company, we build technology that, and, and most of those companies are, are somewhere a partner or a customer of ours. Um, we see several winners. There's, you know, Apple's going to win, Google's going to win, but there is also people who are going to be neutral of device making, for example, who may win, uh, and there's other independent device makers who may may actually provide a great platform that you care about. So I think it it's really depends on what point of view you look at. The device maker, you know, the, the, the platform maker like Apple, of course, they want all the people plug in in their devices and they'll have their own devices eventually, use that data to improve their own devices. I mean, yeah, obviously they're gonna do that. And so will, will, will many of them. In some ways, Google is a little bit more neutral than that because they, they're trying not to ship devices so and, and provide platforms to others. But it's, I think there's going to be a lot of winners. It's a huge market. It's a high growth market. It's not one winner takes all. Well, 
I'm, I'm asking the question because I've heard good feedback about specifically the modular piece of reference hardware from hardware from Samsung. And for your own business, what does it mean? Do you, can you benefit from it? Uh, we uh, ourselves, we love what Samsung is doing. We also like what what, what Apple is doing, and I think what. Google will do would be great too. Uh, for us, it's a great opportunity. Uh, more ways to build devices, the best. I think that now you have to ask yourself, if you're a device maker, are you going to adopt uh, Samsung's device platform, knowing that Samsung is in the device business? I mean, you know, will a device maker adopt Apple's device platform, knowing that Apple is in the device business? So. That's one point of view. As a user, do you want to have the ability to switch from an iOS phone to an Android phone or the other way around? And if you go to 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 Apple's platform, will you be, you know, will there be lip service support for Android? Or, you know, just like, you know, Google does support the iPhone quite well. In fact, Google Maps is very good on, 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 on iPhone. So, you know, I think you have to look at all these you know, with a, it's not as simplistic as people make. Oh, there's an open platform. Everybody's going to put their health information. I think it's much more complex. And when it comes to health information, if we were worried about the NSA doing searches on our emails to find the word bomb in it, let alone what's going to happen when, you know, our favorite platform maker sells that information to the insurance company who figures out that because of your average blood glucose reading or your average blood pressure reading or you're not walking enough, your insurance has to go 20% up or you should get a new test for, for, for your driver's license. Remember, this is not like you know your score on uh, Flappy Bird or, 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 or some other birdie program. It's your personal health information. A lot of the people who, who, who look at that trying to figure out how do we make money or, you know, I'm, I have no chronic conditions and so I don't care. But I have a lot of friends who have chronic conditions. I know they don't want their information in it because nobody ever gets ahead in any job, any corporate environment, any insurance uh, policy, uh, in anything you do by having a chronic health condition, like you know, high blood pressure, diabetes, whatever it is. I mean, do we want that? I mean, do you, you know, does, 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 does a female want, you know, because you can tell from, from looking at, at people's health information, this is like really personal. We know we have hundreds of, we have over 100 million nights of sleep and activity in our big data repositories that we get through the work we do with with Jabo, Nike, and many others. By using big data approaches, statistical analysis basically, modern versions of statistical or updated versions of statistical analysis, we're able to probably tell if a female has terminated a pregnancy. Do people want that? Do, do they want people so, but to? That, that's your business, but so I mean, I'm, how? <laughs> I'm saying that, but I mean, really, if you're worried about the NSA having access to stuff, we should be really worried and asking a lot of questions instead of saying, oh, yeah, oh, great, we're going to give out that information. Well, but, this is very personal information. I don't think people have realized that yet. But so yes, so you are in this business because you actually uh, collect this this data, the you know the health ref, uh, monitoring and stuff like that. So what is the solution for real privacy for the for the data? Do you have an idea about that? Well, the first thing I think that, that that's really important is that users need to be to be aware of how that data may be used. For example, you, you need to make sure that, you know, today, everybody's putting, say, everything on Facebook. Nobody knows how these pictures are used, et cetera. Now, you're going to put your sleep information on, on Facebook, then you're going to get into a car accident, uh, your sleep information is going to be there, and you're going to find out that, that you had an hour and a half sleep last night, and, 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 and that maybe uh, you, smoke, you smoke a little pot, and the insurance company says, hey, you're liable. I'm not covering you. Who knows? Yes. I mean, yes. I'm not saying. I mean, I'm just saying 
people have no idea of the consequences of these things. And we need to be very careful. Of course, you know, this is not like announcing a programming language for, uh, for building, you know, video games. This is our lives. This is Mrs. and Mr. Everyone's life. This is serious. Wearable is a serious business, really, because it's very personal. We make the core technology and a lot of the IP in this, and we see it every day. So it's going to be really important that companies that are involved with this have a very, very uh, strict understanding of what the user is willing to do with that information. First, why should you trust all your health information to one company anyway? Yeah, there is nothing that says that you can't have a sleep monitor and you have to send it to Apple or to Android. Yeah, for example, the health kit announcement means like uh, the, all the health data will be stored by Apple somewhere, you know, so to well, be well, shared well, across applications. So I, I think there's going to be people who are going to who are going to to say, oh, fine, I'll give it all to Apple or Google or whoever it is, Facebook or et cetera. And some people do that. Um, and I think it's fine. I think that you'll find that people who have chronic conditions, before they start looking at that, they start going, oh, is this something I want to do? This is what happened in the digital records, uh, records business and in the medical industry. Yeah. About five years ago, everybody said that in the medical industry, everybody's going to have digitized uh, records that Every physician could uh, hire, so uh, could access. So I go to see my 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 general practitioner. He sends me to somebody else, uh, like I don't know, a, a heart uh, specialist. Then I'm on vacation, and I think maybe I have some spot uh, because I've been in the sun too long. So I'll go to uh, I'll go to to that, and they can access all my records and see all my health. And that is so good to treat me and make me feel better, and I get much better medicine that way. But I understand that some people want to keep a tag on everyone all the time. No, there is no research in the world that says that that makes for better medicine. In fact, if you look at all research, it, it, nothing points to that. And if you look at people who have a chronic condition, they found that so I'll tell you a funny, uh, funny story. We were at a major carrier, a carrier with 50,000 um, employees at their headquarters. Major carrier, one of them. And we were looking at doing a special solution for blood glucose monitoring, just with our technology. You know, we, have, we have advanced blood glucose monitoring technology that we can make part of it. So the CEO gets really excited, goes, wow, you know, I know that you know 10%, almost 10% of my people here are pre-diabetic or diabetic, uh, certainly diagnosed pre-diabetic, and probably 5% are diagnosed diabetic. I'm going to send an email to everybody, and we're going to go. We're we're going to get you several thousand test subjects. We're all excited and all that. Not a single person responded. Not a single. And the reason is they. They found out that the fact that they're pre-diabetic or diabetic, and there are a lot of people in America who are pre-diabetic, um, puts them back in, in any promotion or anything. They, they, people look, oh, you're sick. Or there is no benefit from sharing that information except to take people back. And I think that's going to be the big issue with some of the wearable information. And people say, oh, yeah, we're going to put everything. We're going to put all the medical information. I think that leads, we have to be very careful whether that leads to a science fiction, you know, the minority report or some crazy society. And we, it, it, it's a real, real, um, you know, it, it transcends wanting to make money out of wearable and all that. It's really an important questions to ask. Um, and of course, every company wants to own all this. Every company wants to get all these devices there. But I think users have, and we as an industry, have to figure out how can we return that privacy, that right to be a human being, an individual human being, to everybody with technology when we have all these companies who want to take all that privacy away to monetize it in some way, right? I mean, that's, you know, I, I, and again, 
if we were concerned about the NSA doing text searches on our emails, our conversation for the word bomb, wait till people have access to your full health records from birth, uh, and, and then you'll be surprised at what happens, you know? You, you'll have people coming to your house saying, you have to go to the hospital now, you have to go, you have no choice. You know, you, you cannot drive your car, you're not allowed to drive your car anymore because we found this and that and you're too much of a risk. And statistically, you know, out of uh, 200 people who are of exactly the same history of you, 180 had this issue with an accident, we cannot drive, let you drive anymore and you'll be there. Oh my God, I've lost all control of any freedom personal freedom that I had. This doesn't appear to be the case when you look at things directly. But when you take them to the next level of detail and you start thinking them through, these are powerful questions to ask, especially in the light of what happened with NSA. I'm actually surprised that there, people are not having this debate in a very wide vague. It's, yes, do we want to give all that to everyone or anyone who says, oh yeah, we'll give it for you for free, you know, we'll store it for you for free. Nothing's free in this business. Okay. Sorry. So. <laughs> Is that a long answer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm glad we get a little support. I mean, sometimes I feel like uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, preaching in the desert. So, uh, talking to you about fitness, not health. About what? <laughs> We know that fitness bands have a low retention rate. So what will be the key innovation that will bring more value to the users? Well, you know, we're in the business of building technology that, that we embed in a whole bunch of uh, situations. One of the issues with a lot of fitness bands is that they were focused on being glorified pedometers. Uh, the one that hasn't done that has been the new OP24 band, which is really focused on sleep and and, and do a, something you know where we built technology that is proven to 91% clinical accuracy compared to polysomnography, which is the gold standard. And that's our IP and our technology that's in there, a sleep tracker technology. And what we find is that's sticky, and I tell you why. If you're used to go on your walk every day and you have now your schedule, et cetera, et cetera, and that the band might decide to to, to, in some ways, nudge you to be more active. That's extremely useful. But things don't change as much. You know that if you walk for an hour and a half, you get 7,500 steps, whatever it is. So you have an idea how much it is. But nights are different. Every night is different. Every time you go to sleep, it's a big mystery and it's different. So understanding that part of your life, which for many people is eight to 10 hours, sometimes less, sometimes more of their lives, is a big deal and it's a big improvement and it's a very simple way to improve health without changing much, just observing, understanding what's going on, how much uh, light sleep do I get, how much deep sleep do I get, you know, do I snore, what, what, what is it, what has an impact? And every night is different whether you're in your bed, you're not in your bed, there's always some disruption, you wake up, you, you can't remember how many times you wake, woke up or, or whether you woke up, you, you say, I didn't sleep well, but did you really not sleep well or is it because you woke up in a, in a you know, your alarm woke you up in a, in a deep sleep uh, cycle as opposed to wake you up when it's the most opportune time to wake you up. So I think, the secret for wearables is, is going to be, you know, exploring the night and maximizing sleep, which is interesting because um, all the rest is less interesting. I understand that the rest is very interesting for people to sell ads. You know, you walk by a, 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 a store that sells jeans and it says, ah, oh, I have a jean in your size and I'll help you guide you there and all that. But that's all commercialism really. And you know, it's, it's a business opportunity. But helping people understand how they sleep, how the body, the mind, the soul in some ways rebuilds itself is very important. And I think that's one of the very, very sticky parts of the app. And of course, most of these apps just count how long you slept or make some graph. But I mean, I think the UP24 is today the only one that really does a careful analysis of what sleep is. And I think that shows the way of what's important. So I've heard from another company that actually 23% of the U.S. population suffer from uh, sleep uh, issues. 
and most of them they don't seek any treatment. Do you think that uh, this, the sleep analysis, you know, component of of your wearable will actually help these people to have uh, better treatment to uh, connect I with doctors? I, I, I can't. There's so much echo here, yeah. I can't even understand. I think, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I said like 23% of the US population uh, suffer from uh, sleep issues. And most of them, they don't uh, look, seek for treatment because they think that there's no treatment. And there are a few protocol like uh, used by uh, psychologists that will help them. So do you think that technology, your technology, can, can help those people? Well, can, can we help people sleep better? Absolutely. And so I think it's much more than 23%. In fact, let's take That's a poll That's the number I got. Uh, I think it's over 80% of people have a sleep run. Let me ask you a question here. Who thinks that last night they had too much sleep? One person. Who thinks that last night they had not enough sleep? We live in a completely sleep-deprived society. I, you know, I, I, I talk to a lot of people. You put a thousand random people in a room, whether they are high-tech people like we are. You know, we are all high-tech people. We're, or, or you go in a farming town and you have people who are in the farming. Everybody's sleep-deprived. There is not enough time. And so anything you can do to help people sleep better helps a lot. In fact, you know, I was really impressed. I mean, uh, in the Huffington Post area, Huffington, that's her big thing. She, you know, uh, uh, you know I was listening to her and she was, she was saying the, the most important thing that she's learned over all her career is to sleep more. And I said, exactly. But we don't think it's sleep more. We think it's sleep better, understanding your sleep understanding what's going on. You probably don't need to sleep more. You need to sleep more efficiently. It's not the amount of time you spend rolling and tossing in bed. It's actually how much sleep you got. And by understanding what's going on, then you can do much better. I, I think it's a very, it, it, it's a huge opportunity because every mammal sleeps. And of course, every human being sleeps. It's true for dogs too. Dogs are much more, uh, much more, uh, opportunistic than we are. They sleep when they can, and then they're ready to go anytime. That's how we want to be. I have this theory, you know, we should learn from dogs. Okay. <laughs> Just uh, uh, another question that uh, interests me. So why do you think Nike uh, stopped uh, to make his uh, fuel bond? Well, I can't speak for Nike. Nike is a partner, trusted partner. I mean, we're a trusted partner, and we're, we're a mutual trusted partner of each other. So I can't comment on Nike. I think you should ask Nike themselves. What I can say is Nike has a lot of exciting things coming. It's exciting for, for, for our business at Full Power and our technology. Uh, but, you know, I can't comment on what they're doing with our product line and all that. I, I think you ask them directly. I had to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> Okay. Um, so, in wearable, uh, the data, as, as you said, is, is the big business. And so, uh, what will be the key, uh, the key areas where, will, where there will be the most opportunities in the wearable market? Well, in the wearable market, there's there obviously, as we know, improving people's uh, health is really, you know, that's, that's a fantastic opportunity. You know, we, we, can, we can look at that. After improving people's health, uh, corporate security is a normal thing. You know, we all wear a badge. I mean, not we all, but you know, some of us wear a badge. Some of us wear something else. And so we um, we basically uh, uh, we, we we basically think that you know, melding it with that, there's no reason to wear a badge. You know, if you have a wearable device, wearable device should open your door, et cetera, et cetera. So I mean, and recognize who you are and all that. So security is a big deal. Home automation is a big deal. They, they, they meld, you know, you get into your house, it knows what you're doing and you can control things, et cetera. So wearable is, is fantastic, you know, twist, twist, shake, shake, whatever, uh, tap, tap, whatever you, you, you want to use as, as a user experience, right? Um, gaming is, is, is a big opportunity too because wearable devices and gaming is, 
you know, when we interact with video, video games, I mean, there's some fantastic opportunities in wearables. So I think, I think there's really fantastic opportunities. Health is not the only opportunity. In fact, it's a difficult opportunity for all the reasons we said. I mean, it's a wonderful opportunity, and we, we built a lot of technology around sensor fusion and, 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 and uh, monitoring health, et cetera. But there are many other opportunities, which is exciting. Okay, uh, thank you. I think we have a few mo mi minutes for question. Anyone has a question? A anyone? Oh, Mikhail. Hi, so um, we have all these big titans who are designing systems to collect data and create um, value for consumers. How do you, and, and I think I agree with you that what people can do with health is very drastic and very impacting to your life. So what can, cons how can consumers actually collect together and create an opinion before this whole thing happens? Do you want me to repeat the question? Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of echo, so... We, we, we can't hear you, that's how I can okay, hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's much better. Okay. <laughs> too, so, much, too much uh, reverb in the microphone. So the question is, there are all these big titans, right, you know, that are trying to create systems to manage health. The consumer is the guy that's most affected by it. So, Usually it happened was that search is got invented, Facebook got invented, then we designed the privacy policy to work with us. Can there be a switch around this time where can, what can consumers do to influence this as it happens before it sort of becomes critical? Maybe that's the innovation opportunity we have this time, as, as we have learned through all this, is the question. So can, can, can actually usage help design solutions better because there's a lot of data coming in and there's a lot to learn. This is how we design our technology. I mean, we spent 10 years, uh, I, I completely agree with you, um, actually designing solutions, using them and creating that feedback loop and getting more usage and now we're doing that with you know 100 million nights of sleep and uh, 100 million uh, days of activity and 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 especially in the sleep area um you know the the, the deep understanding of of, of 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 that technology is really important and so i think that everything we're going to see is going to feedback that way big data is a big part of the design i mean i read some some places where it says that that's exactly why apple wants to get all that data is to help them design a device because they realize it's not obvious to design a device. Any more question? Yeah, we, we can't hear you real well here. I was talking from the regulation. The regulation for privacy and Facebook. So can the regulation cycle be turned around? Can the Well, it, w w so from a regulation standpoint, it's exactly the same thing, is that we can learn from what we know, and the more we have, the more we learn. But the problem is regulators always lag the industrial opportunity, unless, you know, you have a big scandal like the NSA scandal, where, you know, everybody realizes, oh my God, everybody's listening to what we do. Uh, you know, you know, people are listening to my phone calls and people are reading my emails. Well, it wasn't the case. I mean, we got robots trying to look for some keywords, and if they found them, they took it to the next level of detail, et cetera. But with health information, as we said, we think it's even more important. Uh, but I think it's going to take an awakening, and I was glad to hear you guys all excited about that, to understand what it meant for all of us, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Everyone, Mrs. and Mr. Everyone. I think it's very, very important. It's seminal. It's way more important than knowing who owns a spreadsheet, or even on Facebook, who owns your pictures. This is your life, and this is your life in, in a in a box and people can do a lot of stuff where insurance companies, uh, whatever it is, you know, uh, as, as, as people, if, if you look at what's happening, we're trying to give 
in this country, health care to everybody, finally, we're becoming a civilized nation. Uh, I'll tell you what side of the, of the debate I'm in. But finally, you know, you have universal health care in this business. But we don't want to have universal spying on people's uh, health metrics to be able to, to, to give them different access to, to, to life, because that's what it is, you know? I mean, do we really want that to happen? I think it's really dangerous. And so regulation will happen exactly in that way if there is a reaction to all this says, hey, wait a minute, all this enthusiasm about open platform is very, very um, superficial. The reality is, what does that mean for us as human beings? What will it mean? You know, and, and to, you know, remember, we're a democracy in this country. Everybody's kind of who's elected is accountable. But many countries where that's not the case. Imagine now the same things being applied, say, in Russia right now, or in even more in North Korea. It's already the case. All these, all this technology becomes. You know, we have a. It becomes even a much bi bigger issue for everyone. So, completely agree. It's it needs to happen, but it's only going to happen if if there is a groundswell movement to say, hey, we've got the technology because that's what we we have the technology to do all this. But now we need to make sure that Mrs. and Mr. Everyone's privacy is protected from Big Brother watching him. It's just that simple. And it's not just your pictures. It's not just you know the websites. It's not just the porn that people watch. It's your most intimate data. It's your health information. That's a big deal. Uh, one last question to kind of end things off, uh, Justin. So my question is, do you know of any organizations that are effectively advocating for individual privacy for wearable data? Uh, especially in the United States where we have a significant lobbying force for any regulatory agency, that you're going to need some group that's advocating and fighting against lobbyists on the other side of the coin. So I'm curious if you know of any organizations that are doing that work on privacy. So it's hard to hear you here so, because the, the, so, uh, PA, the PA system sounds like a reverb on a hard rock guitar player. I know of one, you guys, when you come out. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, you know, that's kind of my mission right now, is to help the wearable industry. And we believe that ultimately it'll help companies like Apple and others, because, because this could all come to a halt very quickly, just like the NSA surveillance. You know, you don't want, you don't want the push in wearable to end up like NSA surveillance suddenly have the government says, you can't do this anymore. So we think it's really important that we all start talking about this and making, hey, how do we make sure that we don't get in that big brothers watching you world and focus on the technology and build the most exciting opportunity on the planet? Because this is wearable, the most exciting opportunity in at least a decade. That's a big deal. It doesn't happen very often. But at the same time, we want to make sure that just like the NSA come to a halt, we don't want, you know, all the NSA big data stuff came to a halt. We don't want to ha that to happen to wearable. So we need to make sure that we, as citizens, as Mrs. and Mr. Everyone, we focus on that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much.